You won't set too big a goal in too short a time frame or too small a goal in too tall, long a time frame. You'll set real goals in real time frames. Today, I'm going to talk about how to not give up when progress is slow. So I'm, I know many people are sitting in situations where they have a goal to get something done, and it's taken longer than you expect. So if you've got a paper and pencil or some place to write or type, uh, you might want to take a few notes. First of all, I'd like you to realize that there's inside a human being, there is the authentic self, which is our true self. And then there is our inflated self, which we go into sometimes puff ourselves up and get a little pride. And our deflated self, where we kind of deflate ourselves and get kind of shameful almost or humble. And these two personas on either side of our true nature, true authentic self, tend to skew and distort the goals and objectives that we strive for, sometimes fantasies we strive for. They're a result of a judgment <clears throat> because when we look down on somebody, we tend to exaggerate ourselves. When we look up at somebody, we tend to minimize ourselves. And anytime we exaggerate or minimize ourselves, we distort time and space in our goals. So I want you to think about it this way, and maybe you can write this down. Whenever you set a goal, if you're puffed up and elated and inflated and cocky and self-righteous and puffed up with pride, you tend to set too big a goal in too short a time frame, which is designed because of the subjective bias in your interpretation of your reality, is designed to humble you, pride before the fall. So what you do, you set a goal, it's not happening in the time frame. Um, you overextended yourself and thought, well, I could get it done and you didn't get it done. And then you kind of beat yourself up and you humble yourself. The purpose of that is not a mistake. It's not a weakness. It's a feedback to you that you set too big a goal in too short a time frame without the proper strategies on how to get it done. It's not that it couldn't be done possibly in that time, but you didn't have the manpower or the resources or the strategies to get it done in that time, or you didn't have the drive. It wasn't as important as you thought it was, whatever the thing, or you had things that are more important that surfaced in your mind. But when you tend to set goals in a manic state, this is why going to hypey seminars that are, are hypey uh, speakers that hype you up and get you all puffed up with fantasies, and you then have a crash afterwards because you set a goal that's too big and too short a time frame. So. I'm not here to teach you that. So in the Breakthrough Experience program that I've been teaching all these years, I try to help people get poised and present and authentic because <clears throat> that's where they set real goals in real time frames. So anytime you puff yourself up, get elated, get puffed up, get proud, you are very likely to set a goal that's too big and too short a time frame without the strategy. And that is designed to humble you. So then you can beat yourself up, go, but gee, by now I thought I'd be. But on the other side, of the personas, the, the, where we minimize ourselves, we tend to set too small goals in too long a time frame because we deflate ourselves and depre depreciate ourselves and don't believe in ourselves and are less confident in ourselves. So we tend to minimize ourselves and minimize what we can accomplish in time frames. But we set too small a goal in too long a time frame, which means we usually accomplish it within that time frame. So then that lifts us back up. Every one of our goals that we've set from those personas, the exaggerated or minimized persona, are feedback mechanisms to get us to set real goals in real time frames with real strategies. So if we set too, if we set too big a goal and we get humbled, that calms us down back into real goals and real time frames. And if we set too small a goal and too long a time frame, that makes us succeed, which lifts us up again. Both are mechanisms to guide us back into authenticity. In fact, everything that's going on in your life, if you really, really want to look carefully, you'll see that it's guiding you back to authenticity. It's guiding you back to your true self, where you set real goals and real time frames. Whenever you puff yourself up with that persona and look down on people, you also tend to want to expect them to live in your values, which is futile. 
So that's a feedback to let you know that you're puffing yourself up. You don't have equanimity and equity with other people, and you have an unrealistic expectation on others. And a lot of the goals we have are not just us not accomplishing things. We sometimes expect other people to do things in the time frame, and then they don't do it because we projected onto them our values and expected them to live in our values, and they can't live in our values. So they're going to let us down. And that is necessary to humble us from our pride to make sure we communicate what we want in terms of their values so they have just as much incentive to get it done. And by being who we really are, we set real goals with real time frames and then do it respectfully in terms of other people's values. So everything that's going on in our business, in our life, is a feedback to make sure we go back to authenticity. It's really quite amazing how the body works and the mind works, life works. At the same time, if we sit down and minimize ourselves and expect others to, to expect ourselves to live in other people's values, we're automatically going to set up an unrealistic expectation too, because we're not going to be able to live in their values. We're going to end up further depreciating ourselves. We can't live in other people's values. We can't get others to live in our values, but we can communicate what we value in terms of other people's values and help other people get what they want, which then turns around and helps us get what we want. So if you're setting an objective, and I like to think of it as an objective as a neutral, balanced, authentic goal. And a fantasy is one that's subjectively biased, not objective, but subjective, biased, skewed. You know, Einstein said something really, really profound years ago. He said that when you're kissing a girlfriend and you're elated and manic, two hours flies by, you know, bam, like that, like two minutes. But when you're waiting for a freight train, two minutes seems like two hours. So whenever you're not in your authentic self and you're elated or depressed or manic or depressed or puffed or depleted, anytime we do, we distort our perceptions of time and set unrealistic time frames. And this sets us up, sets us up for unrealistic expectations on getting things done with ourselves or other people. That's why all of those are feedback mechanisms trying to get us back to loving individuals, respecting individuals, communicating in their values, our values in terms of their values, which is exactly what I teach in the Breakthrough Experience and try to teach in my values training program. I, I, I do what I can to help people do that because what that does is helps people set realistic expectations in real times with real strategies, et cetera. Anytime you're living by your highest value where you're most objective, the blood glucose and oxygen goes into the forebrain and activates the executive center where you can see vision, you can actually strategically plan, you can execute the plans, and you're going to walk your talk in your highest values because that's where you don't let yourself down. And you calm down these subjective biases. That's what that part of the brain does. It calms down the amygdala where all the subjective biases and all the sources of our turmoil is. The moment we end up setting real goals in real time frames that are really aligned with the highest values, we tend to spontaneously act and we tend to get things done by priority. The most any human being can do is to live by the highest priority at any moment in time. One of the greatest questions you ever ask yourself, what is the highest priority action I can do right now to fulfill what's most deeply meaningful to me at this moment? And how do I do it most effectively and efficiently so I'm doing the highest priority action? If you do, you will set realistic expectations. You will get things done. You won't just subjectively bias yourself with puffing yourself up and beating yourself up. You won't set too big a goal in too short a time frame or too small a goal in too tall, long a time frame. You'll set real goals in real time frames. And what I would advise is whenever you're setting objectives and goals and you have long-term or short-term goals, write down the date you set them, write down the date you intended for them to accomplish it. And then as you're pursuing them, monitor and measure the progress. If you're on track, it's probably because you send an authentic goal and it's aligned with your highest values. If you're not on track and you're not getting started and you're, or you're taking longer or you're getting it done faster than you do, you probably had a different persona. Log those and take a record of when you actually accomplish it. If you accomplished it before what you thought, that's most likely your minimized self setting the goal. And if you took longer than you expect, it's probably your exaggerated self setting a goal. Or you set a goal that wasn't really important. You had a lot of other stuff on your plate that you weren't thinking was important, but is more important to you. 
or you had things that came up. And if so, the reality of life is there's times great opportunities come up that are even higher in priority than what the goal was you set. And then you don't want to beat yourself up if you're delayed on the goal because you took and chose to do something more important. And that's understandable. I have sometimes goals that I am on my path on. I'm making progress on. Things are on track. And then some great opportunity comes along and I say, oh, that's even more important than this. So I'm prioritizing my life. I get that next priority thing done. I then delay my long-term outcome that I set. And I, I then now readjust the time frames on it. Now it's realistic again. It's not realistic if you all of a sudden have something that's more important. So you just got to get realistic on your expectations. A lot of our letdowns are because of unrealistic expectations. And those come whenever we're living in our amygdala. You can almost guarantee that if you're not living by the highest priority, your blood glucose and oxygen goes in the amygdala and you start activating from the amygdala. And the amygdala wants to avoid pain and seek pleasure. And that's not real because there's always pain and pleasure in life. And whenever you do that, you're going to subjectively bias your interpretation. You're going to distort your reality. You're going to set goals that are too fast or too slow. And then you're going to get feedback to hone you back in on authenticity again. So one of the wisest things to do is if you have a goal, make sure it's really, really important to you. Go back. If you haven't taken the time to go on my website and do the value determination process, I highly recommend you take the time to go do, do the value determination process that's on the on the site, Dr. Demartini value determination on drdemartini.com. Do that exercise. <clears throat> Go look at what's really highest on your values and make sure you set goals that are aligned with that. I tell people in my master planning program and other programs I teach, don't waste your time on goals that aren't truly, 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 absolutely highest in priority and meaningful to you. Because if you do, you're automatically going to set yourself up to train yourself to have these volatilities and these wobbling feelings about it. You're going to exaggerate or minimize yourself. And those are all symptoms to let you know that you're not pursuing what's really authentically most important in your life. Again, all the symptoms in your life are trying to get you authentic and trying to get you in priority, trying to get you to live by your highest value, which I call the telos. The telos is the highest value, the most important thing that you want to pursue in life. And if you're not delegating lower priority things, that leads to another issue here. If you're trying to do low priority things because you set a goal and the goal encompasses activities that are low on your values, you're going to automatically procrastinate, hesitate, and frustrate. I, I, anything that's not inspiring to do, it's wise to outsource and get somebody to delegate it to and get on with doing it, the what's priority. Because if you're not doing what's priority, you're not going to maximize, you're going to set skewed objectives. You're going to end up having to pro procrastinate, hesitate, frustrate, because, you know, I love business. But the part I love about business is the researching, writing, and teaching. I don't necessarily like doing some of the administrative, but I wouldn't want to sit there and have to do accounting and things of this nature. So I'm business oriented, but in my little niche. So I target that. I focus on what's highest and I delegate the rest. <clears throat> if I try to do all those things, chaos ensues and I'll set unrealistic expectations and I won't get things done because I'll procrastinate, hesitate, frustrate on it because it's not really important to me. What's important to me is what I do. So you want to make sure that you really know yourself and willing to be yourself and you'll love yourself for it because that's what's really priority in your life. So stop, go do the value determination process. Go make sure you're up to date with it. Make sure it's really what's important. Make sure the goals you're setting are not whims and fantasies and, and New Year's resolution type things that are just delusions temporarily. Make sure it's so meaningful that your life demonstrates you're committed to it. Don't waste your time on low priority things. Don't major in minor stuff. Go after what's most important in your life and then delegate everything else. And you probably think, well, I can't afford to delegate. I, I hear that every week almost. You can't afford not to because you're going to, if you're not delegating lower priority things and you're doing everything yourself, you're going to not have a life of inspiration. You need to surround yourself with people that are experts doing the things that need to be done that are not inspiring to you and then go out and do something that's so meaningful that produces an income. That leads to another point here. If you're going and pursuing what's most important to you, you're not going to have fulfillment in life unless you're doing something that's meaningful that serves other people. I've been studying people, and I find that people, they go and pursue goals that have no meaning, that don't serve anybody, are not going to have fulfillment. Your fulfillment in life is a combination of the integration of self-other fulfillment. 
helping yourself, help other people, help other yourself. It's not altruistic where you're sacrificing others. It's not narcissist where you're sacrificing others for you. It's a combination of the two where fair exchange, we have reflective awareness. You see that other people are equal to you and you're there to be of service in a sustainable fair exchange. If you do that and you do something you really love to do that you can't wait to get up in the morning and be of service to it, people can't wait to get your service. When that's a fair exchange and a fair service, you'll get remunerated for it. You'll get income. You'll be able to afford to delegate lower party things. That's the path of inspiration. I do what I love, love what I do. That's the way you want to live your life. It's not going to happen if you're not doing the highest priority thing that's most inspiring to you, that's deeply meaningful, that serves people. Ask yourself, what's the highest priority thing that I could do that I absolutely love doing? And how do I serve great numbers of people with it? How can I get handsomely and beautifully paid to do it? What are the highest priority actions today I can do right now to move in that direction and live by priority? If you do, you will be more objective, more set more goals and get more accomplished. It's efficient. I learned from the time trap by Ella McKenzie when I was 27 years old about how important it is to prioritize your life, to make a list of everything you're doing and prioritize it based on productivity, how much it earns and meaning. That means it's something that serves others and meaning is something that serves you. And then to make sure you hire somebody to do the lower priority things so you're free to do on the most important things that produce the most income. If you do, you'll make more income. You'll be freed of the lower priority things. You'll be more have more meaning and fulfillment. You'll serve more people. And life is pretty amazing when you do that. But otherwise, you're sitting there doing lower priority things, going into your amygdala. The second you do lower priority things, your amygdala comes online. You're going to subjectively bias your interpretations. You're going to set too big or too small a goal. You're going to expect others to live in your values. You're going to expect you to live in other people's values. You're going to end up creating chaos. And all that chaos is feedback to let you know you're being on inauthentic. It's trying to get you to live by your, everything is going on in your life is trying to get you to live by your highest value and try to help you serve other people in their highest value. And to the degree that you do, you're engaged, you're inspired. That's how you build companies. <clears throat> That's how you build leadership. That's how you reduce the noise in your brain. That's how you end up with more income. That's how you have more stable relationships. That's how you have better well-being and wellness. Because when you're pursuing something that inspires you, that's solving a problem for other people, you wake up your use stress, not distress. That's how you're inspired. That's how your spiritual path is awakened. <clears throat> it's just really obvious that the life is actually pointing you into authenticity. And so that's the key of it. So keep asking yourself, Go online, do the value determination process, and narrow down. I don't care if it, you have to do it once or twice or three times. Do it again and again until you, you are clear. This is what I'm committed to. This is what my mission is. Your purpose in life and mission in life is an expression of what you value most. And a, a, an individual on a mission is unstoppable. And they get way more done in a shorter period of time than anybody else. I've been, I've been living by my mission for 49 years, and I am get a lot done because of it. And I delegate a lot of things and I've generated income doing that and I've served millions of people doing that. And I'm absolutely certain it works. So if you take this advice and you put it in operation and start working towards it, maybe it takes a, a day or a week or a few months to get it all in place, finding the right people, getting the delegations in place. But if you want to master achievement and get more done and do it in time frame that's reasonable, that set, you set out for, that's going to be the path. I don't know if shortcuts other than that, I think that's the bottom line. And many people think that I'm gonna, they're gonna do it some other way, but it's strategically planning things with foresight that are truly valuable, that have thought through with planning. One of the reasons I teach my master planning program is to, for people to have foresight, not have to live in hindsight. Hindsight is inefficient, foresight is very efficient. But by focusing on that and getting it basically done on the, on the highest priority actions on a daily basis, you know, Warren, well, Bill Gates was asked, you know, one time in an interview and, <clears throat> you know, what is, what's his day consist of? And he asked himself a very simple question, at least at one of this, what this uh, showed on it, this video. He asked, what is the highest priority action I can do today to serve the, the greatest number of people in the most efficient, effective manner with the resources I have access to at this moment? Wow. Stick to that priority system and watch what happens. If you prioritize what you feed your mind, reading, if you, find your, if you prioritize what you listen to, if you prioritize what you eat, if you prioritize who you hang out with, if you prioritize your actions, you prioritize your time, prioritize your space, 
you're going to go farther in life, get more accomplished in life than if you don't. There's no shortcut to that. That's that's the bottom line. I learned that at 27. It's made a huge difference in my life. I've got a lot to accomplish because of that. And I'm just passing that on to you. I'm absolutely certain it works. It's just a matter of taking the time to do it. But if you don't, and you do low priority things, and you set unrealistic expectations because of those biases, and you set too big a goal in too short a time frame or too small a goal in too long a time frame, all you're going to do is get feedback from the universe and your life that you're not being authentic. You're not being true to what's really valuable to you. Your identity revolves around your highest value. So anytime you're away from your highest value, you're going to lose your identity. And when you're going to self-depreciate, you are designed. We are designed to self-depreciate anytime we're living by anything other than our highest value. We're going to appreciate ourselves. Anytime we live in our highest value, the blood glucose and oxygen goes to the forebrain. And that forebrain is not only the executive center for achievement, it's also the gratitude center. You're going to have more gratitude if you're living by your highest value than if you live in any other value. So you want to ask yourself, what is the highest priority action I can be doing today? What's the highest priority goal? What's truly important? What does my life demonstrate? My life demonstrates teaching, researching, and writing. I do it every single day. Nobody has to remind me to do it. I'm committed to it. If I go around and I set a goal to go and cook, I'm going to let myself down. I'm going to procrastinate, hesitate, frustrate. If I set a goal to go drive, I'm going to procrastinate, hesitate, frustrate. If I set a goal to go do accounting or do administrative work, I'm going to procrastinate, hesitate, and frustrate. If I set a goal to do that and I set this whim that way and I let myself down, I'm getting feedback that that's not who I am. That's not authentic. And if I'm sitting there going, well, I have no choice and I trap myself because I don't have anybody to do it, well, then get somebody to do it. Because you're otherwise you're going to have a life of desperation, not a life of inspiration. A life of inspiration is living by priority, delegating lower priorities, and giving job opportunities. You're rewarded in life by giving job opportunities to other people, giving them an opportunity to grow in their life. If they get to do, if you hire somebody that can do what it is you want to delegate, and they love doing it, they've got a job opportunity. You're free to do more productive things to make more income, pay the difference, extract surplus labor value out of their work. They now help the economy because the more people in are working, we can see when all of a sudden there's unemployment, there's problems, more crime, more uh, drug issues, more addictions, more health issues. It's so important for doing it. I think the universe is trying to help us fulfill growing culture. I believe that the somehow the universe is set up, the physics and the metaphysics of it is trying to help evolution of consciousness. And consciousness grows by basically being contributive and doing something meaningful and serving people. So by providing jobs and helping the economy and giving them an opportunity and freeing ourselves up to do what's most meaningful and most inspiring and most objective, we're gonna set real goals in real time frame, get them done. We'll have more people helping us. We'll get even more accomplished. Everybody wins out of this. And it gives them an opportunity to do the same in their executive center. So they're grateful, you're grateful, you're both engaged, you're doing something prioritized, you're getting things done, magic occurs. So go back to our first question. How do you how do you not give up on when you're making progress, when it seems slow? If you're giving up, it's not important to you. It's that simple. It's not important. Face the fact. And that's a feedback right there. If, if you're going giving up on something, it means it's not really important to you. If you think you failed, then what you're giving, you gave up on it. And that means you stopped before you got come up with it, an answer. When the why is big enough that the house take care of themselves, you find solutions or you delegate. So just make sure that you're not setting goals that aren't meaningful. Make sure you're not setting goals that are low in priority, that aren't yours. They See, this is why I, I take people to, I teach people to come to the breakthrough experience. And the breakthrough experience, one of the things we do is we go in and take the people that are you're looking up to and you're subordinating to, and you think, oh, I wish I could be like them. And you're now your cat trying to swim like a fish are you trying to live in the shadows of others or trying to be second at being somebody else instead of being first at being you? The moment you do, you inject other people's values. You set goals that aren't yours. You go into the amygdala and boom, you got subjective bias and you distort yourself. And then you wonder why you're beating yourself up. You are designed to whenever you're not being you. The magnificence of who you are is far greater than all those fantasies you might impose on yourself. So you got to give yourself permission to go after what's truly meaningful to you, what your identity revolves around, which is your highest value, 
and get people around you to delegate things and outsource them. That includes people in your home or at work or whatever it is. Get somebody to help you get the things done so you can get on to doing the most important things. Otherwise, you're going to have a quiet life of desperation, not a life of inspiration. And that's why I want you to, to come to the breakthrough experience, come learn the Martini method to dissolve the baggage that's accumulated and to prioritize your life. That's one of the things I, I teach in that program, to prioritize your life. If you, nobody's, nobody's going to get up in the morning and dedicate their life to your fulfillment and your highest priorities. If you don't do it, nobody else is going to do it. So I wanted to share that today so you can get on with making things happen and achieve more. And also some of the way to help on that, I want to share with you something. I've got a, a special masterclass on accessing your seven greatest powers. This is how to do achievement in all of the seven areas of life. To, to develop your mind, to develop your business, develop your wealth, to develop your relationships, develop your social leadership, develop your health, and develop your inspiration. So this is about discovering your unique genius and the potential of all seven areas of your life. It's accessing your seven greatest powers. It's an on-demand masterclass. Take advantage of this. You, 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 I don't think you can listen to me and hear these ideas without some of this sticking. I'm hoping anyway. So please take advantage of this masterclass. Go get it right now. Take advantage of it. It's free. It's, uh, it's worth it. And come to the Breakthrough Experience so I can give you more in-depth information on how to master your life and, and, and achieve more in your life. Because, you know, there's, your life is going to go and tick by pretty cool. 67 years old, been ticking for 49 years doing what I love doing, which is speaking. Goes by quick. You do not want to have Bonnie, Bronnie Rare's regrets at the end of your life. You want to basically be able to say, I did everything I could with everything I was given. 